Do you think that the 7900 XT will be better down the road as AMD cuts prices? The card is unappealing at $900 US, but at $700 to $750, it probably would be a good deal. And thank you both for your excellent reviews. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what basically what you said in your reviews. You said something pretty much on the money with this one. Yep. And as we've seen in sort of the week after you published your review, interest in the 7900 XT is not great. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, they haven't been flying off the shelves like the XTX model. Many countries have XTs in stock, even at the MSRP at the moment, at least as we looked at a couple of days ago. So mm -hmm. maybe they've sold out at this point, but certainly from, yeah, talking to retailers and stuff, it doesn't sound like people are particularly interested in it at $900, which makes sense because the card is worse value than the XDX. Yeah, look, um, while my review, the thumbnail and title were quite negative, I mean, it's a bit of a joke at $900, let's be honest. The conclusion of the review was, that, yeah, the product works, the, the performance is quite good, uh, but the price isn't. At seven hundred and fifty dollars, it would be a, quite a good value product. Seven hundred dollars would be a great value product uh, that we could really highly recommend. I think it would fly off the shelves at seven hundred dollars. Yeah, it'd be a great value product. It'd be a great buy. But that's sort of what RDNA three needed to be, right? Yeah, I would have thought. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think AMD's sort of been stuck in this position of kind of you know they're trying to get the most the mm. biggest margins they possibly can, mm -hmm. satisfy shareholders. Which, again, they're a business, they're a company, they're publicly traded. That's their job, is to make as much money as they can. So you can sort of understand why they would be trying to go for you know, the NVIDIA tiers, trying to price match them. But I think the 7900 XT was kind of extra bad because, yeah, the XTX is kind of priced similarly to match other products undercutting a little bit but you know if you look at ray tracing it's you know similar value mm -hmm. but then for some reason the xt doesn't even match up with the same like it's slower than the price drop yeah so yeah, yeah. It, it kind of doesn't it's like 17 percent slower 10 percent cheaper yeah so it's kind of I, I would understand pricing it at exactly the the price drop like they could probably do you know, 15% cheaper for a 17% less performance, which isn't still isn't amazing, but that but would have not, been like, you know... It's like you can have that for a bit cheaper. It's yeah. A bit, yeah, it's yeah. more in line with what you're expecting. So, a bit of a weird choice there. I expect that product in classic AMD fashion, you know, negative reviews, at least from us, and then they'll reduce prices and we'll be like, hey, 700 XT, the best value. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if that happens six months from now or even yeah. less. So, it's just... I don't know. It's this and it, it's bizarre because they kind of they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot by making all these negative reviews day one. Which, when the price does improve later down the track, most reviewers don't go back and revisit mm. the cards and be like, "Let's do our second seventy nine hundred XT review." I'm not saying reviewers should do that. They mm -hmm. certainly don't have to. It's mm -hmm. perfectly fine not to do that. But you know, reviewers don't do that. So AMD no. is kind of in this position where, yeah, they make the product better later. But then they're stuck with people searching for that product. They're seeing those day one reviews saying, oh, this is a terrible product and, you know, just buy the XTX and, or even buy an NVIDIA GPU or a competitor's GPU. It kind of hurts. You know, that, that strategy I don't think is super great, especially if, you know, they're kind of in that number two position. They're trying to increase market share. They kind of need all the wins they can get. And yeah, I would, yeah. they kind of just... Yeah, yeah, I agree with that 100%. But as you were saying, they're for profit. And yeah. they know they're guaranteed X amount of sales. So yeah. they're like, we will milk the early adopters, the people who are going to buy the card anyway, no, almost no matter what we put the price at. So we'll jack the price up, we'll cash in on them, and then when sales slow down, we'll do an official price cut and yeah. people will get excited about it. So I think that's the strategy there, but it is disappointing to see, you know, get really excited for these products and they sort of, yeah, arrive and, yeah, they don't live up to expectations and there's a few issues and... Yeah, anyway. <laughs>